Chapter 30 Wayside School is Falling Down A strong wind whooshed around the playground in the early morning before school, blowing dirt and leaves in the faces of the children. When the bell rang, they could hardly make it from the playground to the school. The wind was blowing directly at them, pushing their hair straight back. With every gust of wind, the school building teetered one way, then tottered back the other. As they headed up the stairs, they could feel the building sway back and forth. The higher they got, the more it swayed. Hooray! yelled Kathy. Wayside School is falling down! What are you so happy about? asked Joe. We won't have to do our homework, said Kathy. They entered the room on the 30th story. Mrs. Jules rang her cowbell. Find your seats, she said. That wasn't easy. All the desks were crammed together on one side of the room. The building swayed and the desks slid to the other side of the room. Finally, the children all found their seats and planted their feet firmly on the floor. Today, we are going to have a fire drill, Mrs. Jules told them, so let's be prepared. Who is our door monitor? I am, said Mauricia. Good, said Mrs. Jules. Who is our help monitor? I am, said Jason. Very good, said Mrs. Jules. You have a big mouth. Stephen raised his hand. What if there really is a fire, he asked. There's not going to be a real fire, said Mrs. Jules. It's just a drill. I know, but what if there really is a fire, asked Stephen, and then the firefighters won't come because they'll think it's a drill. The school will burn down. Don't worry, said Kathy. The school is not going to burn down. It's going to fall down. Bleep, 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 bleep. It was the fire drill. Mauricia, the door monitor, held open the door. Jason, the help monitor, ran to the window. Help, he screamed. Save us. We're up here. Help, help. Mrs. Jules led the children out of the room. If there was a real fire, the children might not be able to see her because of the smoke, so she constantly rang her cowbell. There wouldn't be time to go all the way down the stairs either. Mrs. Jules led them up the ladder and through the trap door to the roof. If there was a real fire, helicopters would rescue them. The wind was even worse on the roof than it was on the playground. Mrs. Jules stood in the center and held the cowbell high above her head. She looked just like the Statue of Liberty. Everyone stay away from the edge, she warned. Kathy sang, Wayside school is falling down, falling down. It's not falling down, said Stephen. It's burning down. And no one will rescue us because they think it's a drill. Jenny noticed a dark funnel-shaped cloud off in the distance. Tornado, she screamed. We're all going to get sucked off the roof. A flash of lightning lit the sky, followed by a loud crack of thunder. We're going to be struck by lightning, shouted Todd. No, we won't, said Stephen. We'll burn in the fire. No, we'll be sucked up in the tornado, said Jenny. No, the school is going to fall down, said Kathy. Mrs. Jules continued to ring her cowbell. Clabonk, clabonk, clabonk. The strong wind carried the sound for miles. Suddenly, screams came from down below. Then the whole building began to shake violently. Earthquake, yelled Stephen. Fire, corrected Stephen. The school must have been struck by lightning, said Todd. Tornado, said Jenny. All fall down, said Kathy. The building started to rumble and shake. There were more screams. Listen, said Myron. They're trying to warn us about something. Down below, over 500 kids and teachers were shouting together. Star bringing purple. What are they saying? asked Mrs. Jules. I don't know, said Myron. Mrs. Jules rattled her cowbell. Star bringing purple, they shouted again. It sounds like star bringing purple, said Myron. What does that mean? asked Mrs. Jules. Myron shrugged. Mrs. Jules rang her bell even louder. Star bringing your bell. Wait, said Myron. They're not saying star bringing purple. They're saying star bringing your bell. What's a your bell? 
asked Mrs. Jules. She rang her bell even louder. The school shook and rumbled. Stop ringing your bell. Stop something, said Myron. Mrs. Jules rang her cowbell. Stop ringing your bell. Stop ringing your bell, said Myron. Oh, said Mrs. Jules. She stopped ringing her bell. Down below, all the students and teachers clapped their hands. But it was too late. Rondi opened the trap door. Cows, she exclaimed. The school was filled with cows. From all over the countryside, cows had heard Mrs. Jules' cowbell and heeded the call. There were thousands of them. They filled the stairs and all the classrooms. There was no way for the children to get down. Helicopters finally came and took them one by one off of the roof. Wayside School didn't blow down. It didn't burn down. It wasn't struck by lightning, sucked up by a tornado, or destroyed by an earthquake. It was cowed. No one knew how to get rid of the cows. Cows are strange animals. They don't mind walking upstairs, but nothing can make them walk downstairs. Someone suggested starving the cows, but the farmers wouldn't allow that. Thousands of bales of hay were sent in. Several cows had calves. The newspapers thought it was funny and made jokes about smart cows learning to read and write. And so, Wayside School was closed. The kids and teachers were temporarily sent to different schools. Only one person stayed behind. He was there all day and all night trying to get the cows to go home. Come on, pleaded Lewis, the yard teacher, as he pushed and pulled on the cows. Go home, please, pretty please. Everybody mooed.